there is someone here who does not believe that they're his child forever. They've been, uh, you've been, you've failed the Lord in some way and you feel that he cannot take you back. But it's his child and forever I am. His child I and Hallelujah, thine the glory this morning, Agape. It is good that you're in the house of the Lord this morning. I bless the Lord for you. Agape, you know I love you. But I don't want it to be taken for granted. I want to tell you as often as I can. Yes, I love you, church. <laughs> All of you. My heart really is filled with love for you and for your goodness and for your building up, and for your deliverance, and for your healing, and for all the gifts that God has blessed you with to be revealed. The Lord bless you today, Agape. Oh, I come with the love of the Lord to bless you in a mighty way. Somebody say hallelujah inside this house. Hallelujah. Hey. Now this morning you have to utilize all your vocal cords here. Yeah? This is not silent night, that time I reach it. This here now is make some noise unto the Lord. For the God we serve is an awesome God. Can we say hallelujah? hallelujah. Deuteronomy 8, 7 to 8 says, For your Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. A land with brooks and streams and deep springs gushing out into valleys and hills. A land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates and olive oil and honey. Oh my God, the Lord is taking us to a good place. Those of you, wherever you are, get ready. You heard the elder say, put on your seatbelt. Hey, yeah, yeah. Get ready because we go in some place this morning. 
And of course, we ain't talk. When's the last time I see you, Elder? Last week. <laughs> so, the Holy Spirit is always alive in Agape. This morning, get to Genesaret. Oh, destination this morning, Genesaret. Get to Genesaret. Because the Lord is bringing you into a good land. A land with brooks and streams and deep springs gushing out into valleys and hills. My God. The last time I shared a sermon with you, I said, the Lord shared with me to share with you. You are before an open well, expect much. Well, you better be expecting much. Because the Lord is taking you to a place of abundance. My God. Listen. If you could get this, you'll be jumping out of your seat. What I am saying is, I don't know if the seat belt could hold you back this morning. You will have to jump clean out of your seat if you get the magnitude of what the Lord is about to do. Get to Genesaret, but how and where? <laughs> we get in there. <laughs> Turn in your Bibles to Matthew 14. They say, no, what is this? Minister Deborah, Matthew 14, have a Genesaret? Oh, yes. Matthew 14 has a Genesaret. And Genesaret means valley of riches. Wonderful, beautiful. Genesaret is a lake with a strip of land adjoining, rich soil nourished, irrigated by streams and springs with fertilizing power. This is what the Lord is doing to you this morning. You're going to a place of abundance. If you have business, get ready to triple your profits. If you have problems at home, get ready for these to be resolved in a bonding measure. If the boss is giving you trouble on the workplace, <laughs> or you're going to work smiling tomorrow and nobody know what you're laughing at. But you are in a place called Genesaret. Now let's get there. Matthew 14, 22 to 36. I read NIV version. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him on the other side. He dismissed the crowd. Let me just put it into a little context there. The thing that happened before this is Jesus feed 5,000 people with loaf of bread and two fish. So after that, he's dismissed the crowd and Put the disciples, send the disciples ahead. Verse 23, after he dismissed the crowd, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves, because the wind was against it. I'll say that again. The wind was against it. Verse 25, shortly before dawn, some translations say, at the fourth watch, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. This is what Jesus does. You know, we have a God who does some supernatural things when he has to rescue us. So Jesus went to them walking on the lake, not walking on the bottom of the lake. Not walking on the, the, the gravel at the bottom of the lake, but walking on the water of the lake. The voice of the Lord is above the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said. And they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter the Trinidadian in the side. Peter said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. 
Now this fella, you check his passport. He's have some kind of origin from this side of the world. Because it's only people over here bold so. Peter said, if it's you, tell me to come to you. On the water, just like you cooking. So Jesus said, come. <laughs> eh? Jesus had a stick fight going on here. Boah. Yeah? Come. You're playing his man. Let's do this. Peter come out the boat and he walk on the water and he come towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, church this morning, the wind may be against you. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and he began to sink. Cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. That's my God. You have little faith. Why did you doubt? Verse 32. And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Those in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. When they had crossed over, they landed at Genesaret. Hey! In the book of Mark, it says, they anchored at Genesaret. Genesaret was the lake at that part of the Sea of Galilee, and also the land adjoining that portion of the lake. And when the band, the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. Someone say hallelujah for God's word. We are to get to Genesaret this morning. Turn and tell the person next to you, get to Genesaret. It is imperative that you do. Now, that is Matthew 14. Mark 6, 47 to 50 says something. Mark 6, you know, Matthew, Mark, we must know our Bible a little bit, yeah? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. <laughs> you know, I knew a woman who named her four sons like that. As they're born, one at a time. Like maybe God told her she would have four. Matthew, then came Mark, then came Luke, and then came John. My God. I said, woman, you had a New Testament. She said, don't put mouth on me. I can't make no more. <laughs> because the next set of children, you know, a woman you ask, and an extra name, Romans, and so we going on. And when she reached Galatians, Ephesians, she'll have to give up. <laughs> so we move from Matthew to Mark. Mark 6, 47 to 50. Later that night, it says, the boat was in the middle of the lake and he, he was alone on land. That is Jesus. I love 48. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Straining at the oars. This morning, the Lord told me to tell you because some people are out there where the wind is against you. You're battling some waves because the wind is against you. In Matthew, it says, after he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray, and he was there alone. You know, Jesus has set some very powerful examples for us. And this is what you have to find a, a mountain top to get to by yourself with God where you could pray all the time for whatever situation you're in. Get a solitude place where you could pray. Jesus did it more than once. He set an example for us. But one thing I like about this image is, you know, God has a panoramic view. 
God sees everything that is going on with you. He is the God who sees, really. Huh? Hey, remember Bear? Hi, <laughs> Rohi. He is the God who sees. So that the Lord always has an eye on us. Praise Jesus. Because they were separated from him by distance only. Not connection. God is always connected with his people. So they are on this boat going to the other side. Some translations will tell you they were set for Bethsaida. B-E-T-H-S-A-I-D-A. We come into that. But Jesus was seeing them. He went up there to pray. You know it tells us something else? He did not sleep. The Lord who looks over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Oh my God. Members of Agape. Those of you looking at us at home. The God I serve shall neither slumber nor sleep concerning your affairs. You do not worry about that. He was watching all night. Jesus had an all night prayer by himself. You could do that too. You don't wait for them to call all night prayer in church. You can have an all night prayer by yourself. Pray all night. So Jesus is watching. It says he saw them in difficulty. Jesus is seeing you in difficulty, which is why I like how Mark put it. He saw them straining at the oars. Somebody this morning is straining at the oars. In your situation, straining at the oars, the waves are hitting you because the wind is against you. It says, the boat was a little distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. We see several things here at church. Jesus had concern for the people. He found himself time to pray. But you see this wind buffeted. Waves hitting the boat. What is buffeted? It has nothing to do with buffet. Don't start to think about food right now. Buffeted mean strike repeatedly, violently, in difficulty, and in affliction. You hear what I'm telling you? The waves are hitting you, striking you repeatedly, and violently, in difficulty, and in affliction. And why? Because of the wind. That wind is a contrary spirit. It's a contrary wind. At home you find yourself being hit, buffeted repeatedly, violently. You're under some kind of attack. The waves are hitting you because the wind is against you. That wind. It could be in your home. The situation at home. The situation with your family. Oh my God, buffeted, striking. Repeatedly, waves are hitting you. You are under some kind of attack. Now, what I find very interesting about this passage. It's not a storm. No rain falling, people. There is no rain falling here. Read it, and read it back to front, read it upside it down. Turn the Bible around and read it again and there's no rain. What there is is wind. It's a sort of strange phenomenon. And that's what you're going through right now. A strange phenomenon. You can't really describe it too well because there's no rain, it's just wind. Wind of the water hitting you. The waves smashing on you. 
home, you don't understand what is going on. It is a strange phenomenon. In your business, everything was going good, but suddenly, you don't show what's going on anymore. It is a strange phenomenon. In your home, in your marriage, the waves hit in you. Your children in a sort of place where they are being hit repeatedly and violently. They are under some kind of attack. Some strange phenomenon. The wind is against you. In this country right now, we are under some strange phenomenon. Because a contrary wind, a contrary spirit is a hitting us. Huh? We have a wind taking place now with domestic violence. A wind where women are being murdered and children are being slaughtered. A one-year-old child neck slit. A woman chopped to death. That is a contrary wind. That is a spirit blowing and hitting us, striking repeatedly and violently and showing difficulty. That is a contrary wind. On the job, colleagues, people you working with attacking you. Just so, no rain falling, it is a strange phenomenon. People have to write up your report. Suddenly you cannot get a good report. Just so. It's not added up. You're in a strange phenomenon. Let me give you some good news this morning. Jesus. <laughs> the God that we serve is seeing all of this. The God that we serve is nearby. He is seeing this and he is getting ready to move you from that place. Move you from that situation. It is going to be turned all around. The Lord is not going to wait until these waves kill you. Until this wind mash you completely up and destroy your children. The Lord is seeing what is happening. Your children are under distress, uh, being hit repeatedly. You are under distress, being hit violently in your situation. You are in a strange phenomenon. You have asked yourself, what is going on? So whole night are suffering like this. Before midnight, I'm being hit. After midnight, I'm being hit. Well, when this will stop? Where's whole night going on? The winds, the, the waves buffeting, the wind just blowing. Let me tell you something. There is a man called Jesus. You hold on to him. Because there is nothing that is taking place with you that he does not know, that he does not see. I don't know what's going on home by you. But I know Jesus is seeing it. I don't know what is going on with your children. But I know Jesus is seeing it. I don't know what is going on on your workplace. But I know Jesus is seeing it. And he is going to move you from that. And he's not going to do it in a way you are thinking. You know, you praying for things to work out in a certain way. But Jesus doing it in another way. You, you, you hear what's going on? <laughs> you don't know. Now, Jesus is a drama guy, you know. I have studied this gentleman, you know, and I have observed this about him. He's a fella. He into performance and thing. He like drama and thing, you know. You could see entrance and exit in the scene. You can see special effects uh, and lightning and sound uh, that by Jesus. He is a director of movies. So Jesus watching. The wind blasting you. 
The waves sit in you. When you're exhausted, you're nauseous now. You're nauseous in this situation. Now you say, Lord God, what's going on? My stomach upset. My head hurting me now. It's just lash against lash against lash. It is a strange phenomenon. And here comes Jesus now. Just remember, the Lord is not going to allow us to perish. He's not. He's the God who saves. He's the God who rescues. He's the God who delivers. He's the God who moves us from one place uh, and puts us in a better place. Uh, that is the Jesus that I serve. So whether it's, it's, it's wind against you in the home, whether it's wind against you in your very marriage, whether the wind is against your children are suffering you in tears, whether the wind is against you because of addiction. Could I preach this morning? Whether the wind is against you because of affliction, sickness, where there are no more doctor to go to, you went to the doctor, they sent you to the specialist. You went to the specialist, the specialist sent you to the next specialist. Mercy Lord. Is how much specialist? I mean, I know I'm special, but come on. Come on. Huh? Probably because I'm special, I had to go to someone specialist. And I'm still sick. Oh God. But Jesus, which is why he is Yahweh. <laughs> That's why he is Rapha. Oh God. Jesus, he is the God who heals you. So after buffeted, here comes Jesus. The Bible tells us, verse 25, on the fourth watch, that's just before dawn, like people in Tobago say, before daybreak. Yeah. It says, Jesus went to them, walking on the lake. Oh my God. Jesus coming straight to you, you know. He's not making a detour. Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of, of lords, the King of glory, he is coming to you, walking on water. You are not expecting Jesus to put in such an appearance. In fact, he had never done this before. You know Jesus. You know he has come and hug you up. You know Jesus will lift you out of the miry clay and put your foot on a rock to stay. Is it Jesus that you know? But here comes Jesus now, walking on the water. Let me tell you something. You don't know what my God could do. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what my God could do. Eh? So my God put on performance mode. My God decided I'm going quickly and I walk. Now listen, God could have pulled a boat. God could have just said boat appear. Let there be both. <laughs> My God is the God who say, let there be light and there was light. Let there be and there was. My God says, say, let there be both. And a boat would appear. It could have even been a speedboat. <laughs> but My God, <laughs> My God, you see what you're going through? My God coming different. Different. He is coming to you different. So he walking on the water coming. My God is walking on water coming. Every time I read that, I say, my God. You could imagine what that must have looked like. 
Remember, no rain is falling. It's just wind blowing. And with all that wind, my Jesus is able to walk and cut straight through that wind and walk on water. With that wind against. It's only Jesus could do that. Your situation, what the wind is against you at, my Jesus walking straight through that. Now when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. Take your God coming to rescue you and you frightened. Now that will be quite an interesting thing to take place. You were complaining how the wind have the wave hitting you, repeatedly striking you. Huh? You want to know when this will end and when the, the answer and the rescue is coming, you do not recognize it. In fact, you probably, with your Trinidad mind, you probably think is Obia. You say, what going on there now? That must be Obia. Yeah, you're some kind of folk character. But that is Jesus making an appearance that you have never seen before. Because my Jesus will do the supernatural to come and rescue you. My Jesus need not use all these means that you are accustomed to. He not moving you from a miry clay, putting your foot on a rock to say, he is walking on water to come and rescue you. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. When they say this is a ghost, I tell you. See, this thing I real, there's a ghost, it's an apparition. According to what secondary school you attend, you would say it's an apparition, and otherwise you say it's a ghost. What is that thing? Oh, what's that jumpy? With that, now, what is interesting to me is these disciples were just in an encounter with Jesus. I told you just before this, Jesus feed 5,000 was a miracle take place just before this. In the daylight hours before this night, Jesus feed 5,000 people with two fish. And five hops bread. Some little small bread and two little, two little fish. Was a shark and thing, you know. Was a little fish fitting in a basket. He feed 5,000 people with that. And they were right there. They marveled at that. How it is he break this bread and give thanks and it multiply. Oh my God, miracle working God, and I am in the midst. God worked this miracle in the day, and by night, we terrified. We don't recognize him anymore. Church, know who God is in. He could show up anyhow, but no, this is God. Don't pretend you don't know, you know. We are slow learners, you know. God do all that miracle. And you know they still, who is this? Instead of they say, look, Jesus, the miracle working God who just performed these miracles, look, he coming. That'd be a good road match. The miracle worker, look, he coming. I hear in the basin that already. The miracle worker, look, he come in. Oi. Hey, you sucker, I said. That, that, that road match right there. No, that's not what they say. They say it's a ghost. So we have miracles. Experience miracles are going and we forget so quick. You see, because when the wind is against you, it's not an easy thing. I am saying in the middle of all that wind beating on you, all the waves trying to throw you down, do not forget that your Jesus performs miracles. Don't forget it. 
It says, Jesus said to them, because they cried out in fear. Verse 27, Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Oh, I bring this to encourage you this morning. Take courage, for Jesus is right there in the midst of the wind that is against you. Do not be afraid. Peter. Peter is a character. I would love to interview him. Oh, I'd love for him to be interviewed. I'd write the article and publish it in the newspaper. The article will be entitled, Peter, the Weird Fisherman. Something else going on with this fella. Peter says to Jesus, Lord, if it is you, if it is you, tell me to come to you. Let me settle this thing. Could you imagine that? You know, we just get on through with God. God is here to rescue. And you know, we ask in question. You say, Lord, is you? Is really you? Well, show me this. Hello? The wind is against you. The waves are buffeting you. Grab on to Jesus and say, Jesus, look me. Jesus, I know you're seeing me. Jesus. No, you, you want a test. <laughs> the wind are really hitting you. Eh? You are a test now. We come with the SEA exam, which is another C the poor children had to go through. This SEA is the win against them. Eh? You had to be praying for children to come through an exam called SEA. Is the C and the win against them. But Jesus will take them through. Peter says, as you tell me, come to you on this water. Jesus says, oh, you're playing, man, come. Come. You know Peter climb out the boat? Boy, this Peter is something else. You know, you think he do that as a grandchild, but he keep himself inside the boat. Because remember, the wind is against it. You know Peter climb out the boat? <laughs> Listen to me. I don't know what was going on in his head. But you know he climbed out the boat with all this wind going on, where all the waves smashing the boat. He climbed out the boat one leg at a time and start to walk on water. Oh my God! You see, once you could believe that there is Jesus there, you will walk on water. Oh, I declare you're walking on water now. Yeah, that wind is not affecting you anymore. For Peter to walk on the water, the wind that was against them is not affecting him anymore. It's a divine shield around him. Oh, he has the proper prescription to defy the wind. Faith and obedience to God. You will defy that wind. That wind still blowing, you know. All what I'm telling you here, the wind is still raging. But Peter, one leg at a time, steps out of that boat and begins to walk on the water. Oh God, eh? that come like one step for man, another step for mankind. <laughs> oh God, this never took place before. Nowhere is it recorded that a man... Walk on water. A half crazy fisherman like Peter. Not a high priest. It means anybody who have faith and who could obey God could walk on water. That's all of us. We come in just so. Faith in him. That wind will not affect you. The same wind that was battering you. The situation will not affect you because with Jesus, come on, you could walk through. And that wind did not touch you. When Peter was walking on the water, the wind was not affecting him. Oh my God. 
Well, not a thing is this. It says Peter got out of the boat and he walked on the water and he's going toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, verse 30 says, but when he saw the wind, the enemy is that wind against you, you know, that contrary spirit that is blowing. Huh? And let me tell you, for you to see wind is serious wind. You could hear the wind. But for you to see the wind is serious wind. Because the wind come like air. But how it is so severe, you will see that wind. And when he saw the, the furious nature of that wind, he got frightened. It says he was afraid. Church, do not let the wind, the force of that wind in your situation, throw you off. Or oh, stay walking on that water. And when he got afraid, he began to sink. You're going down now. So he's sinking now. Now he bawling out. Lord, <laughs> he didn't say that before. You see how we are? All kind of old talk with Jesus before we address him as Lord. All kind of old talk in our situation before we address the man as Lord. And he is King of Kings and he is Lord of Lords. Uh, no, if it's you, <laughs> if it's you, we know it's you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We know it's you. Thanks, thanks, eh? Thanks for coming. <laughs> thanks, thanks for seeing us. <laughs> thanks for being in the midst of us. <laughs> thanks, eh? He said, Lord, save me. He said, he should have said that when he was still inside of the boat. He could have said, Lord, save us all. Look how this wind mashing things up here. Ah, if it's you, walking on water, so tell me. You call me, I come to you, I will walk. <laughs> That's us. We, we, we like a set of old talk. With Jesus. You just hold on to Jesus. Say, Lord, save us. This story would have been shorter. <laughs> Immediately, God is a God of plenty mercy, you know. In spite of all the nonsense that we could utter. In spite of the fears and the doubts, in spite of the disbelief, God is still an immediate God when we call on him. You notice nowhere did they call on Jesus. The wind is against you. The waves smashing the vessel that you're in. Your home, your marriage, your children, they're getting mashed clean up. And you know nowhere there did they call on Jesus. They were enduring all of this. This morning, call on Jesus now. Huh? Because he is immediate upon that call. When Peter say, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. Because, you know, he's sinking. He's going down. And I know he held him by his right hand. Because as the God we serve, he has a victorious, mighty right hand. And he reached and he pulled Peter up. Bible says he caught him. Oh, the Lord will catch you this morning. You will not perish. You, you being beaten with this wind and this wave, but the Lord will catch you this morning. 
Verse 32. When they climb into the boat, the wind died down. Let me read that again. <laughs> when Jesus and Peter climb into the boat, the wind died down. You know this wind was blowing all this time. This contrary spirit is blowing all this time. When they climb into the boat, the wind died down. You see, when Jesus come in the boat in the presence of the people there, <laughs> Jesus said had to tell the wind behave. The wind has to die down. Nature has to bow in the presence of God. You know, Jesus was in storm. And when they tell him, Lord, look at the mess. Jesus get up and Jesus say, peace, be still. He command the wind and the wave. You notice he didn't do this here. Jesus said, tell the wind nothing. Jesus just watched that wind. You know, sometimes parents don't have to tell the children everything. Huh? Well, I don't think I had some kind of abnormal parental experience. But my mother didn't always have to talk. They have a way parents will watch you. You get the eye. My mother did that very fine. Yeah, and you knew exactly what the eye meant. You matter what you so. You know to straighten up long time. And if you're a little dotish and you miss the eye, you'll get this. She ain't talk yet. Yeah, because she make you. And you know what the standard is. Don't be crazy now. Big people talking you in the middle of the conversation. You get an eye. You're still there. You get a finger. That means move from here, go inside, go far. Big people talking here. The wind but Jesus watched the wind so. Jesus watched the wind. You interfering with my people. But the wind stopped one time. Before God eradicate wind or once and for all. Yeah? Before you get a proper like, like a cocktail. Before I have to show you who is God here when you know you have to stop. The wind stop. God didn't have to say anything. Just his presence with his people. The wind no go. Let me tell you something. Just the Lord presence with you. The evil no to go. That affecting you will go. When they climb into the boat, the wind died down. Verse 33 says... Those who were in the boat worship him. Truly, you are the son of God. Oh boy, lift your hand and say hallelujah now. <laughs> Truly, you are the son of God. Listen to me. You know, they didn't know that when he was walking on the water. They say it's a ghost. <laughs> but... He is truly the son of God. And you see that kind of worship? That worship takes your places. Verse 34 now. We now reach the Nazareth. When they cross over, they landed at the Nazareth. And when the men in that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought their sick to him and begged him to let the sick touch just the edge of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. Listen, 
get to Jadassaret. You have to go through the wind that is against you. You have to go through waves buffeted, striking repeatedly and violently. You have to get through that only with Jesus. There is no other formula to get you through to Genesaret. When they started, they were put on that water, on that boat, to go to a place called Bethsaida. That is not where they ended up. You see, that violent attack changed the direction. Ah. Sometimes you're going through something and you don't understand, but you're going to end up in a better place. Woo! They were headed to Bethsaida. That place, the land is unproductive. You can only fish in the lake. You can't grow one thing. The land is unproductive where they were headed. But after this battering, the wind against them, and the Jesus appearance, and the Jesus deliverance, and the Jesus rescue, the boat changed direction, and the boat landed on Genesaret. And Genesaret is a place of abundance. My God take his people from the, the violent striking wind to a place called Genesaret. They in the lake of Genesaret. <coughs> and as Mark, I believe, says, they anchored there. Mark 6.53. When they cross over, after all of that, they landed at Genesaret and anchored there. Oh, this morning you're coming through those waves and you're going to anchor at Genesaret. Because Genesaret is irrigated with streams and springs that have fertilizing power. There are abundance of trees and flowers. In Genesaret, important crops flourish together. Crops that are seasonal are all growing together. This is the research on Genesaret. Different fruit needing diverse conditions are growing together beyond the expectation. Hey! Expect much. Expect much, church. Because where you are going to Genesaret, it is beyond expectations. Different fruit needed, diverse conditions are growing together. It mash up agricultural science. And they say something about the fruit at Genesaret, the crops. They have a longer shelf life. They preserve and stay long for a stay good for a long time. It's a strange phenomenon. Oh my God, like strange phenomenon. Fruit ripening throughout the year. It say grapes and figs for ten months of the year are in abundance. Variety of fish in the lake. Prosperous fishing industry. This is the place where you are to anchor and thrive. Valley of riches where provision is made and there is healing. My God, there's an open well. Expect much. Genesaret is a place beyond expectation. It says, next verse. Verse 35 of Matthew 14. When the men in that place recognized Jesus. Now you notice. The men in Genesaret <laughs> recognize is Jesus. And the fellas on the boat. <laughs> oh my God, somebody. You know the fellas on the boat didn't recognize it was Jesus. These are the fellas with Jesus. The disciples. And he just performed a miracle. Feed 5,000 people with five hops bread and two scrawny fish. 
And you know Jesus is walking to them on water and they don't recognize him. When they anchor at Genesaret, they say the people there recognize Jesus. My God. Church, recognize your God. Know who your God is. Because when you recognize Jesus, it have blessing there. It said they sent word to the surrounding country. Word, it went viral. It was a post on Instagram. One time, Jesus is in Genesaret. Come. Jesus is in Genesaret this morning. And I'm telling you, anchor yourself there. Come. It says they sent word to the surrounding country. People brought all the sick to him. And they begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of the cloak. And all who touched that were healed. Janassaret is the place to be. My God. My God. Psalm 66, 12 says something. I don't know if you've seen it before, but it struck me. Psalm 66, 12, the second part says, we went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. Oh God, I don't know your experience. Oh, you went through enough trouble. You went through enough battering. You went through enough sickness. You went through enough being attacked. It says, you went through fire and water, but the Lord has brought you to a place of abundance. My God, who is like you, God? Who is like you? Psalm 89, 8 to 9. Who is like you, Lord God Almighty? You, Lord Almighty, your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule over the surging sea. When the waves mount up, you still them. Just your presence. Just a cut high. And the wind stop. Verse 13 says, your arm is endowed with power. Your hand is strong. Your right hand, my God. Your right hand is exalted. That right hand that caught Peter will catch you. Isaiah 41, 10 to 13 says this. Do not fear. This is what the Lord says, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed with the surging wind and the wave, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. All who rage against you will surely be a shame and disgrace. Listen to me. You're supposed to scream hallelujah right there. All who rage against you, every contrary spirit, every contrary wind, oh my God, will surely be a shame and disgrace. Those who oppose you will be as nothing. Who's so dotish to oppose you today? We send out a declaration of victory. All you raging against you, ha! You will be ashamed and disgrace. Oh, make that personal. All who rage against me will surely be ashamed and disgrace. All who oppose me will be as nothing and perish. Verse 12 says, You will search for your enemies and can't find them. My God, those waging war against you will be as nothing at all. Let them sit down and strategize. Let them see how this wind coming to attack you. Let them see the wave buffeting you, hitting you. Let them plan the plan. Verse 13 says, I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand. Do not fear. I will help you. That is what the Lord says this morning, church. Oh, my God. My God is awesome this morning. Isaiah 43, 2 to 3 says, When you pass through the water, I will, I will be with you. Yeah. When you pass through the wave buffeting, when you pass through that wind causing the wave to hit you, splatters, I will be with you. 
When you pass through water, I will be with you. When you pass through river, it will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Verse 3 says, For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Oh my God, somebody scream hallelujah just about now. This morning I want to tell you, you could be going through the water. But the Lord has now brought you to a place of abundance. Church, stand. We are at Genesaret this morning. Genesaret. Whatever you going through, how the wind is against you, whatever is hitting you, what attack you are under, know for sure, do not fear. The Lord your God is here. He takes hold of your right hand. He will catch you. He will keep you. He is taking you even if you don't see it. Your destination is not where you think you are going. You are not going to Bethsaida. You are going to Genesaret. And we go to Genesaret this morning. It is a place called the Valley of Riches. It is a lake that is fully nourished. It is irrigated by streams and springs. There is abundance. For the Lord has brought you to a place of abundance. Get to Genesaret this morning. Lift your hands. Oh, say hallelujah this morning. Oh, my God, this morning I am glad that there's a Genesaret, a place of abundance for you this morning. And the Lord says, come. All the people in Genesaret, they recognized Jesus was in the midst. And they said, oh, the word, they say, come. Oh, this morning I say the same thing. Come. Oh, you want to be in this place of abundance, so you want healing this morning. Come. Because in Genesaret, it is said, the place of provision beyond expectation. And they brought all the sick, and they were healed in Genesaret. This morning, your healing is sure in the place of abundance called Genesaret. If you need that abundant anointing, if you need that healing, come this morning.